Thanks for joining us again, guys. It's Steve here from Drops of Pollock Fishing. Me and Nav have decided we're going out on a effectively a cheap as chips, but fishing trip, only a short one, three hours at most. Uh, it's just to show you that you, you don't need all the gear. If you do want to give it a try, there's loads of guys at Whitby that'll do short trips and provide you all the gear. So this is us headed out of Whitby Harbour. Really foggy, um, as we get out the fog's still there, but it only lasts a short while. Just a quick video here to show you the debris in the water. There were logs, um, lumps of wood, uh, various other rubbish. Um, the two guys that we just panned across, they come up from London. Great guys, had a right laugh with them. Um, always a pleasure when you have good banter on a boat. So we're just outside of the harbour now, past the boys and we're headed towards the cliffs just past Sands End car park or Sands End this is the gear that we'll be using old boat rods, scarborough reels a 12 ounce lead and three mackerel feathers or cod feathers everyone on the boat had the same and some people caught better than others look at the draw more than anything At this point the skipper gives us a quick rundown of uh, what we're doing um, because it's a basic trip they don't want you using knives if you need anything sorting out your hooks etc unbaiting fish they'll do it all for you we were on board with uh, the boat sea, sea mist so everything's really basic if you saw then what I was thumbing, it's, um, it's a wing nut on the reel. When you untighten it slightly, it just slackens off the reel and that means that you can drop down. So if I don't catch it later on, that's how I'm slackening off the reel. So like I say, just three hooks in a line, nice and simple. I'm holding on to the weight rather than holding the line. It's just a touch safer, that's all, and you have a lot more control over it. A lot of skippers don't like the the weights banging about on the inside of the boat or the side of the boat. It can chip the paint, cause damage. They don't want that. So we've gone down now. Um, this was a second drop relatively quickly. I think in this one we can see that even myself or Nav hook up fairly quickly. Right, so Nav's rod was twitching away and it's because we crossed lines slightly. But it's reeling up now and there you go, first one to catch. A decent sized mackerel on. <laughs> this is just a slightly different perspective, just to show you when you're, um, when you're coming up how much you can shake. If you lift up, two decent sized mackerel on there. Was it three? Beautiful. No, just the two this time. Size matters, eh? <laughs> that was me feeling the bite and then being unsure. I assume that were the smaller mackerel. I'm reeling in. I've picked up a second mackerel because it 
uh, it bit and it fought a lot there. And I believe that's Ken the Skipper. So back to me, uh, original camera. So all we're doing is jigging, nice and steady. Taking it easy, enjoying the weather. The mist really dropped off when we were out. There we go, we had the second bite on then, which were much better. Hope you can see the rod action. It's not particularly stressful. Nice and steady. And there you go, there's them two. So the great thing with mackerel feathers is as soon as they're off, all your hooks are untangled, you're straight back in, no worrying about rebaiting or smelly baits, whatever. And away we we'll go again. So here we can see straight for the lead weight rather than the line and that were a really decent sized mackerel, really happy with that one. I got two brilliant fillets off of that. So this is me reeling in the single mackerel, again, just to see more of an action cam version of it. Lift up, grab the weight, mackerel straight into the bucket so you don't lose it. Gently down, unhook and back on it. And again, from the third angle, if you want to see it. By all means, if you don't want to handle the fish, Ken the skipper will do it. He's, um, he's, he's on it. So just in case you're interested, when I'm filming occasionally I have to change my batteries, they last for about two hours depending on the camera and what detail etc. Um, so when we're steaming between two points, I just whip off each of my cameras, replace batteries, hook them back up or uh, clamp them back on um, and then we're ready to go again. We get to our next location and there you go, we start jigging again. Quick drink, jobs are good and we're all over. So again, after a few minutes of trying, the lady on the end caught a mackerel, and there uh, were a quick nod of my rod, and we're reeling up. massive but a decent dinner. Again, I caught the weight, 
rather than going for the hooks or the line just to make it a bit safer quickly and up back down just in case there's uh, another shawl so nicely done by Nav he's got three on I think this time yep he needed a little bit of help I went for the weight straight over into the bucket ready to be unhooked you saw that Nav tightened up the wing nut on the Scarborough reel just saw the line went streaming all over the place And again, that's us steaming out to another location. So we might have done five, six, maybe even seven different locations during the day. It's actually quite nice to have a ride out. The fog's cleared up nicely, so there's none on edge of the land. The sea were lovely and smooth. So we're going to have a look at his gear again. I've just unwound the weight off of uh, one of the handles, undone the wing nut in the middle, and I'm controlling it with my little finger. So I'll let it go down, give it a minute, let it go down, give it a, well, a second, not a minute. Just in case there's anything about. You don't always have to drop straight down to the bottom. If uh, the mackerel are shoaling, there's a chance they'll be near top if the bait fish are there or if they just prefer it. So at this point I have hit the bottom, tighten up a few winds round to make sure it's not on the bottom. I'm feeling for it when I drop the rod down just to feel the weight bouncing, whether it's on the rocks or the sandbed or whichever you want. And then just occasionally, a quick jig gentle jig in this case, we'll wind up a little bit more and a bit more of a jig, just finding out if there's anything at different depths. So just for something a little different, it's not always mackerel that you catch, you catch pollock, cod, Nav's rod is consistently bending, like he's got a lot more weight on than usual. So this time he's actually caught a cod. A decent eating size, all the rest of it. Now as it were coming up, it were moving about a lot. It were trying to swim away and it ended up slightly tangled. I were in two minds, did I need to sort out the tangle or what were the best port of call? And then I realised that there was a chance that I'd drop the fish. So rather than mess about with the line, eventually I do just grab the fish and bring it over.
So it's the end of our three hour trip now. It were about two and a half hours, two hours, 40 minutes in. And we start steaming back in. It were a nice ride, lovely day. Remember to put your sun cream on. So we start packing up my gear, I'm packing up my cameras. Usually leave one running just in case we catch something. But beautiful scenery, great day, caught some fish. It tasted really good. So unlike at the start of the day when everything was misty, eerie, a little bit dark, even though it were quarter to ten in the morning, it's now barely a cloud in the sky, bright sunshine, no fog on the hills, a really nice day. So we headed back in, get back to the dock, get tied up. Um, we all shook hands pleasantries it was a great day great people had a good laugh caught a few fish what more that could you want really one thing that i can't explain if i'm on the left hand side of the boat and all i caught were mackerel how come the gentleman behind me identical setup same rig same reel same rod caught four cod answer it's just one of them things look at the draw I'm happy to go away with all those mackerel, they do taste great. So thanks to Ken the Skipper, Gina who organised it, and that's the Sea Mist at Whitby. I'll throw their details up in the comments so that you can have a look if you want to book it etc. Thanks for watching, all my new subscribers thanks again, really appreciate you joining us. All the best, see you next time, tight lines and big smiles.